All right, all right. We're in the house, family. We're in the house. Black power is the true father. The general saw Ra soon said he kicked back. Get your mind ready for some information that's guaranteed to be happy. That's right. Green the alarm, King SETI.com online marketplace. We got official uh, General SETI DVDs. Boom. DVDs. We got some new joints on the way. Uh, t shirts and hoodies. Got these fly revolutionary t shirts and hoodies for the kings and queens. We got that African and comedic jewelry for the family. Wow. Got some, got some hot joints out there. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? We got some hot medallions and necklace for the kings and queens. That Nefertari right there. You know what I'm saying? Which is real fabulous. You see what I'm saying? We got a lot of new products on kingseti.com. Uh, All you have to do is go uh, to the uh, tab, you know, at the top, and you will see new items, and you will, you know, hit the new items, and you'll see all the fly new items we got at kingseti.com. This is some more of our jewelry, holistic tonics and remedies for the family. You need it out there right now. Home de decor. We got African pillowcases. We got these uh, tr uh, custom-made African tray and coaster sets. They exquisite. You got to have, and you know what I'm saying? We got a, a, a nice variety of those. So you can get on over there to kingsetty.com and cop you some. You see what I'm saying? Ring the alarm. We're talking about SETI University, generalsetty.com. You see advanced African academics, over 800 lectures and videos for the family, two raw for a YouTube video, uh, SETI with the master teachers, Freemasonry is exposed, occult science, the debate, all religions, all world religions, video and radio interview, highlights from over 50 cities, ancient civilization, mythology, black power politics, that gas, economics, and much, much more. This is the complete General SETI uh, website. You know, Omec, Voyages of the Nile, video catalog and library, the making of the white man, video library, series and catalog, and so many, many more. So get on over there to generalseti.com, SETI University, and man, get your class on. You feel what I'm saying? And when it's, when it's, too, when it's too raw for you too, General said he keep it popping on Patreon. You see what I'm saying? It's popping on Patreon. Too raw for you too. Popping on Patreon. We got some hard joints popping off tonight. To tonight we got Moloch, God of the Deep State, Devourer of Black Children. They've been, you know, they've been, you know, trying to, you know, censor me on a lot of the things that I've been saying. But I'm gonna say it because ain't nobody else gonna say it. You know what I'm saying? And so if I see something I need to address it, that's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never been one to hold back. You know, if I see it, I'm going to goddamn say it. You know, and so, you know, we got a lot of, you know, joints over there, homicidal science, depopulation, death code exposed, Patreon. We also got a uh, do pedophile priest find justification for their actions in the Bible. You know, and then we just did this one over there. Caucasians attempt to recreate themselves through gene editing as God. You see, as God. And so you know that shit ain't going up on no YouTube. You know what I'm saying? So get on over there, Patreon. All the links is right down there in the video description. You can hit them links and, and you know, enjoy yourself. You know, we got quality, quality, quality products. And, and you know teachings and you know presentations out there for the family we know you're gonna love okay make sure you subscribe to all my youtube channel uh general seti sara student seti and king set uploading a lot of uh hot goddamn documentaries over there on that king set so y'all better get on over there and get that wisdom for it's too goddamn late you see what i'm saying it's time to get it for real and uh, rock that notification bell. Give the videos a thumbs up. Like it because you love it. And share it with your family and friends. Comment, comment, comment. You know what I'm saying? Be respectful, though.
You know what I'm saying? Because I put your ass up all for that. All right. Let's go to work today, family. Uh, today we're going to be dealing with a very serious subject, which is, is always serious. <laughs> you know, this is a very beautiful uh, lecture. And, you know, people have been always, they've been asking me for a long time. They say, man, when you going to put that damn, uh, the sacred zoo type back up there? You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I, I've been fumbling for a while because I've been doing so many other. I say, you know what? But, you know, I say, well, let me go ahead and, and get busy. You know what I'm saying? And drop that one. And so, you know, I put I put my work in. You know what I'm saying? It's all powerful, too. It's all powerful. You know, you're going to appreciate it. And the reason why we have to do this is because within the zoo top, you know, you're going to see point of origin of the people. You see, you're going to see point point of origin of the people. Because you got a lot of people out here with a lot of crazy-ass ideas about where the ancient Egyptians came from. You see what I'm saying? And so, we, we cr you know, we crush all that shit with right teachings in, 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 in teaching that cannot be disputed at all. You know what I'm saying? We don't give you an opportunity because the truth is so hard. You understand what I'm saying? You can't do nothing with it. You understand when it is it's presented to the people. Ain't shit you can do with it. And so to, tonight when we're going to drop down is the sacred zoo types of ancient Egypt. And in that, you see, we're going we're gonna to look at the origin of the sacred sciences that, you know, would later, you know, become the foundation of the Nile Valley, you know, and uh, again, is to dispel a lot of these myths on the origins of ancient Egypt. Let me get it up here, here we go. Now, okay, you see right here, you see Tahuti, you see Tyrek, you see Sobek, you see Sekhmet, the lion is God, goddess, you see. And so, you know, these are some of the, you know, more popular zoo types, you see. But now we want to look at the habitat of the zoo type, you see. And we want to look at the divine spirit within that zoo type that caused the people to deify the zoo type, you see. And there are many, many zoo types that would deify in, in ancient Egypt, in the Nile Valley. And so, and the principle is anything that is naturally produced in creation got some science in it, some, some, some you know, a, 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 a deep science in it. If you look and, and you watch and you understand what I'm saying, because it's, it, it, it's, created by the cosmos and the cosmos is the supreme wisdom and is, is the supreme knowledge and within anything that is naturally produced is the supreme knowledge of the cosmos so if you look deep enough you will find divine attributes that could be you know uh, a standard or a guidepost by which man and woman can live their life by you understand what I'm saying? And gain, you know, positive outcome by practicing, you know, these things which they see even in the zoo type. Now, ants, you know what I'm saying? When we look at ants, as simple, simplistic as it is, they got a more, a more, uh, you know, uh, successful nationalistic program the most niggas on the planet you see what i'm saying everybody you know they understand uh the group the whole the you know the wellness of the whole you know what i'm saying and they all work in a way you understand what i'm saying to preserve the the whole you know they you know and so you know and so in that you got the queen uh with ant, you know what I'm saying? And then you got the workers, you got the uh the soldiers, and, you know, and everybody play their part. You know, and in that they, you know, the ant, 
has one of the most successful uh, nationalistic programs of any animal or any creature on the planet. You see what I'm saying? And so when you watch that and you see, you know, a lot of our ancestors might venerate, they're not worshiping the act, they, they, they venerate that sacred, you understand, attribute. The sacred attribute, you see, of that particular creature, which is a, a creature of the cosmos, you see? And so, you know, now when we start talking about, uh, let's look at one of the attributes of the Pharaoh. Now you're looking at right here, you're looking at Narma, who is the first king. Now, if you look, you know, behind him, you will see what is the bull tape. You see, and this is one of the attributes of the Pharaoh because he was called the great bull. You see, he was called a great bull. And so you got the Apis bull, you see. It was very profound, very, and it was sacred to uh, Osiris, you know, but the bull and the cow, you know, both were deified and venerated. And the cow was venerated for the fact of his being a nurturer. You see what I'm saying? Providing milk and so on. And so the cow was a, a, a a zoo type of the great muck. You know, it was a zoo type of the great muck. And so when you look at the bull tail, you see here, this is a, this was a, a, a carving, you see, of Nubians. I don't, I don't I know exactly what particular uh, temple they carved this from, but you see the Nubians coming up from the south. You see, bringing many, you know, what you know, what was con considered very sacred in the priesthood and in, in just uh, general spiritual, uh, uh, you know, interactions of the people. You see what I'm saying down, you know, you know, to the leopard skins and you see the bull tail there and you see that the bull, uh, the leopard was one of the symbols of the priesthood. You know, was one of the most sacred symbols of the uh, of the Nile Valley priesthood. But you see that it's 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 the Nubians that are providing the Egyptians with many of the instruments of priesthood of of nobility. The Nubians is bringing this up from the south. You see, this is not coming from nowhere else. You see, so when you, the, the thing is, you have to look at, you know, all aspects, you know what I'm saying, of, of, the, of the culture. You see, you know, you got to look at people usually, if they come from somewhere else, you know, they've already deified the area where they come from. And normally, if they come, they're going to bring their homeland with them. They're going to bring attributes of their homeland with them. When the Arab came, he came with Islam, and he's still in Islam. You see what I'm saying? He brought that with him. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, and, and, and uh, the major zoo type of the Arab was the camel. You don't see no camel on the walls of ancient Egypt. You don't see no camel on the walls of ancient Egypt. You see? And so that right there is it, it, hard. You know, that right there show and, and prove that you know when you, when the camel which is the the greatest zoo type of the air ain't even on the wall you already know that he had nothing to do with it you see what i'm saying he had nothing to do with it these animals that you see that are deified in africa come up out of the deep south and so even you look at the bottom you see uh what they call the yellow baboon which was sacred to uh to who you see all of these animals that were deified in ancient egypt come up out of the south you see and so that the divine attribute in order for the the, the egyptians to have known the divine attributes of these zoo types they would have had to been in the south themselves that show you the origin of the egyptian a lot of people look at the egyptians as if 
you know, this is just, you know, you know, one particular, you know, uh, ethnicity. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it, even when you go into Ethiopia today, you have so many different uh, tribes. You know what I'm saying? In, under the umbrella of Ethiopia. And so people got to understand that Egypt was a collection, a collection of African people. It was not just one people, it was a collection. And, you know, Egypt became the, the you know, the, the central point of the continent where people come from all over the continent to come and expand. And they're just like when people looking, you know, they, they might go to New York or whatever, you know, and, and everything popping in New York, and you know what I'm saying? And big buildings and all type of money, all type of companies and, and so on. And so Egypt was that way where, you know, Africans came from all over the continent, you know, to come to Egypt. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't just one people. You know what I'm saying? We talk about particularly African people. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and so this is what, and so when we look at the hip hop, okay, uh, Tyrek. Now, Tyrek was, a, again, a, 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 a goddess uh, of, of motherhood, childbirth, because the hippopotamus, you know, very protective of they of, of, of they babies. You know, they breaking backs and shit. You know what I'm saying? And so when it's looked at, you know, how protective of, uh, you know, they are of their babies, then they be, you know, became God, or she became a goddess of, of motherhood and childbirth. And then the, another thing that the hippopotamus is connected to war and which is another aspect of you know childbirth you know you know the, the breaking of the water and, and so on and so forth the baby being submerged in the holy waters of the of the of the, of the african mother for nine months and so again that was the the attribute where the african saw the hippopotamus being the zoo type, the zoo type of motherhood, of childbirth. And so when you look at the habitat, see, this is where we got to, you got to understand these things. This is how Dr. Ben taught me. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and many things I taught myself, you know, and I began to look at the culture and look at all aspects of the culture. And so when you see, that the hippopotamus again is, is is habitat is in the south, you know, is in the south, and because you know the the hippopotamus and the crocodile is like, you know, damn near like the yin and the yang, you know what I'm saying? And so Tyrat, you know what I'm saying? Tyrat, and so Bet was like you know, almost like Hey Ruin Set. You know what I'm saying? You know, hey, ruin set. And so is, you know, night and day. You know, that's is the aspect of, of dualities. You know, the aspect of dualities. And so you see that the habitat. Now, you, you, and so when you start looking at these zoo types and you see, and you're going to see that all of the zoo types come from, and those zoo type come from, outside of africa you see no zoo type sacred zoo type of the nile valley valley ever came out of africa and majority of them came further south than egypt you see came further south than egypt so when you, again when you look at uh tyrant uh was a pre-dynastic and you got to understand that tyrant and so back were very close to the god Set. You see what I'm saying? And she was also looked at as a wife of Set. Okay? You know, and so, you know, you say Tyrat was a pre-dynastic hippopotamus goddess of pregnant women and childbirth. She was also mother goddess who wore the solar disc and cow horns to symbolize 
how she helped in the daily rebirth of the sun. She was called, even called the eye of Ra, his daughter, and the mother of Osiris and Isis. That's very powerful. Tyrant was portrayed as a pregnant female hippopotamus with large human breasts, the hind legs of a lion, and tail of a crocodile. She is shown standing on her hind legs and leaning on the symbol for protection and holding the arm. Tyrant was a, a dom domestic deity that was greatly revered. Her most common role was a protectorist of pregnant women. She was often shown with vests in the birth chamber, and she was pro a prominent assistant at the birth of Hatshepsut. Tyrant acquired an evil reputa reputation because she was said to have been the concubine of sex. She was she sided with Horus in their dispute over uh, who was the rightful claim to the throne of Egypt following the death of Osiris. She showed her kinder nature. Okay. You know, I, I, I had to I had to come back on that. You know, I don't necessarily the most of the information was informative, you know, but when it comes to the set. You know, I already know why they didn't try to demonize sex. And so I, I, I could deal with that on another level, you see. But when you see so bad and you see Tyrek, you know, because when, even when you go to Africa, when you see them rivers, those are the two giants of the river, the hippopotamus and the crocodile. And so you look to the right, you see the uh, habitat. And yes, you know, you got a lot of... Uh, you know, crocodiles that come down the Nile, but since they didn't kind of put that Aswan Dam up there, you know what I'm saying? They kind of get, I don't think they come so far down anymore. You know what I'm saying? They get uh, they get backed up at that dam, which is in Aswan. So when you see that yellow buck, before they put that dam in there, they would come all the way down into the furthest extremities of ancient Egypt. You see? But you see here, even in uh, dealing with, you know, uh, you know, the habitat of Sobek, you're talking about the deep or southern extremity of ancient Egypt. I mean, of, of Africa, even further south, even I mean, you're talking about all the way down into South Africa. You see, starting in uh, lower Egypt, uh, you know, uh, working its way through Sudan, Kenya. Ethiopia, Tanzania, you know, all through that, even going west into West Africa. So, you know, we when you're looking for the knowledge and the spirituality, you're looking at the zoo types that would deify, that symbolically represented that spirituality. And once you see the zoo types that were, you know, venerated in, in, re, in, in respect of the sacred science, you know where it originated from. You know where the, the sacred sciences of ancient Egypt. It didn't venerate in no Europe. It didn't vener it didn't originate in Europe. It didn't originate in no Asia. It didn't originate in no goddamn Atlantis and no goddamn Lumeria and no goddamn North America. You know, you got a lot of crazy ass niggas out here today. They can goddamn believe anything. You know what I'm saying? And so you you know, but we cracking heads, you know, and we opening up, up, up chambers and, you know, we pulling back the veil so that people can see what the real truth is. And so when you're talking about the Elvis, you're talking about uh, Tehuti, who is described of the, uh, of the gods and the deity which represents uh, wisdom and knowledge, but sacred wisdom and knowledge, also represented as an Elvis or a baboon. Uh, Tehuti is connected to the moon, wisdom, scribes, and sciences. And, 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 you know, at judgment time, he would write down the weighing uh, of the soul. Uh, symbolizes word, power, intellect, and wisdom. So when we, let's, let's deal with the Ibis first. And so when you talk about the Ibis, again, this is the map. You know, showing the habitat of the sacred Ibis of ancient Egypt. And we see again that the Ibis is from the far south. 
you see, is from the far south. And so wherever you find the zoo type that symbolizes that sacred science or that, uh, uh, that attribute of cosmic law or cosmic intellect, wherever you find the origin of the zoo type, there also is the origin of the sacred science. You see, which shows that the sacred sciences of ancient Egypt came from the far south in the interior of Africa, okay? No man gonna come from no other continent and deify all African animals before the African. You see, these, you know, these was African animals first and foremost deified by African people. And you see the ibis because the ibis has the long, you know, beak. You know, it's symbol symbolic of the stylus. You see the pen, you know? And so in, in that aspect, you know, this is why the ibis was deified in, in sacred wisdom and writing and, 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 and language and all forms of books and scrolls and libraries and you know, you know, the, you know, wisdom and mathematics, spirituality, you know, and all the sciences in, of, of the planet, chemistry, biology, you see. And so when we look at also uh, Tahuti uh, being represented by the baboon, you see, he was also represented by the baboon. And you see that that baboon is basically in the horn of Africa. You know, you know, I forget, I, I think it's the yellow baboon, but they got another term for it. But anyway, you see right there in Ethiopia, Somalia, and on the other side, Southern, uh, Southern Arabia, you know, which is an extension of Africa. You see, and so this is where you find that baboon at. So again, you're talking about the deep south. Again, you're talking about, and, and this, this guy was the God of wisdom and, and, and writing. And, and so that's very powerful. That says a whole lot. You see, that's, that, that, that says a whole lot when the God of writing and wisdom and, you know, and, and Ptah used the, the knowledge of Tehuti to create the universe. He used the, he used the words of Tehuti to create the universe. You see? And so, Again, you're looking at the, the baboon, you know, down in, in Ethiopia and, you know, Somalia. And so this is another, another painting that came off, I believe it was Beit El Wali, you know, another temple, you know, and this, is, I believe, is in the British Museum with so many other stolen artifacts. Them goddamn British damn near stole everything but the pyramid, you see? But you know what, you know, it's so beautiful. I mean, you got a teacher that can interpret for you. What you see here is a lot of the things in which, you know, the Egyptians had truly deified, but it came from the South because the Egyptians came from the South. Many of the Egyptians, you know what I'm saying? Even when I tell you that it was a composite of Africans. It was a composite of Africans from deep South, middle South, even West Africa. Had, you know, were citizens of ancient Egypt, and people got to understand that. And so they brought, you know, wisdom and knowledge from all over the continent. And that's what made Egypt so powerful, because you had a collective of great minds, you know, coming from all over the continent to, to Egypt. You see? And so the thing, I look up at the top, I see, I seen the, uh, the shield, you see, uh, the ostrich fans, you see uh, elephant tusks, you see uh, ostrich eggs, ostrich feathers. You see that they bring in uh, the lions, the you know uh, the 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 leopards, which the priests use for leopard skin. You know so many things that the Nubians brought up from the south that people didn't you know didn't. And, and, and we're going to get deep off into this just to show you that all of the sacred zoo types of ancient Egypt are from Nubia, Ethiopia, 
You understand what I'm saying? What's the difference between a Nubian and an Ethiopia? Nationality. You know, it had nothing to do with race. You know what I'm saying? If a Nubian lived in, Ethi in Egypt, you know what he was? An Egyptian. You see what I'm saying? You, you're talking about, you know, you know what? Uh, an Egyptian, you know, somebody, and they went into Nubia, you know what they was? A Nubian. You know? And so you got to understand that. That these were nationalities on the Nile Valley, and that many Africans went back and forth, and you wouldn't be able to di to distinguish one from the other. Yes, there are many different type of uh, of phenotypes, and you know, but they all are indigenous to the African continent. So Africa is their mother, nonetheless. You see, Africa is these are children of Africa, and so in that. They are one family, you see. And so when you look and you, you see here the ostrich feather and the ostrich and the ostrich egg. Now, the, what, what's critical, and I'm going to bring this up to, and to show you, you see that the ostrich is also in the south. And, you, and you're going to see the divinity in the ostrich because many of the... Uh, well, it's specifically Osiris and Ma'at have the uh, the ostrich feather. You see right there, the eight tenth crown of Osiris. And you see the uh, feather in, in the head of Ma'at. That's the ostrich feather. You see, that's the Ethiopian ostrich feather. And you can see right there the Nubians bringing the ostrich up. You see that, and you see him bringing the ostrich feathers up. You see, which was very sacred in ancient Egypt. And so there again, you see Ma, you know, the, the 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 spiritual foundation of law, divine law, cosmic law, and order. That which you need to run a nation. You see. Her, her divine attribute, the, the Ethiopian ostrich feather, you see it come from the south. So when I show you the zoo type, which is very, very critical, you know, ain't no goddamn European had nothing to do with any of this at all. No Asian had nothing to do with it, any of this. You know, even when I, you know, break down, the, you know, the development of the pyramid. There ain't no goddamn quit saying it come from any because you can see the full development stage by stage in Africa. Dr. Ben taught me that. You know what I'm saying? From the master bound and, and point out all of the pyramids, the failures and how they was trying to develop up all of the failures are in Africa. And, and, and all and when they finally achieved, you know, and got over the failures. All that the whole development stage of the pyramid took place in Africa. So I'm tired of motherfuckers talking about they brought something. They ain't brought a goddamn thing to Africa at all. You see? And we got to expose these lying motherfuckers. You know, because they poison in the mind of the, of the babies with this bullshit. We got to say that. And so you see here, you see the ostrich and you see the, the ostrich feathers, and, and which, you know, uh, again, which was sacred to uh, Osiris and Maya. And so, again, the, the ostrich was deified. You see, again, here, you know, uh, Maya with the, uh, the Ethiopian ostrich fell. Now, another thing, let me bring that one down. Let me bring that one down. Because this one is power. This one is power. Yeah, this one right here. I need to bring that one down. I need to bring it right there. Because when I was looking and I was, you know, I stayed studying. And I seen, and I say, damn, I'm going to show y'all this. Matter of fact, I'm going to, because I don't, I, don't, I, I want it. I was looking and I was studying some Mediterranean civilizations, ancient civilizations, Crete, and you know this was many years back. You know, I, I, you know, I got a hell of a memory when it comes to history and 
especially visual. And I've seen these, these Ethiopian uh, shields for the soldiers and the different kind. You know, they, you know, these is obviously bovine. You know, you got a black bovine and then you got one that's, you know, a, a brown, you know, bovine. You can see right there, that's a leopard. That's a leopard shield. You know what I'm saying? But here's the own, uh, brown and black bovine shield. And so I was looking at this damn uh, fresco from Crete. I was looking at this fresco from Crete, from the island of Santorini. You see what I'm saying? And I'm looking, and as soon as I saw it, I recognized that shit. I said, wait a minute. Man, that's them. You can see right there. You can see the, uh, the brown one right there. You see what I'm saying? And you can see the black, the black ones oh, you know, over there. You know what I'm saying? It, it's the same shit. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? I would think you you would be you would think, man, that might just be a coincidence. And then, which is you know, it's it's more history to that. You know, there's many scholars that already then identify uh, that Crete was uh, a part of the Nile Valley civilization. They didn't already identify that. Where is that I put? I'm going to back it up with this. Because I was the first one that did this one. I'm going to back it up. Where is that? I was working on it today. Hmm. Where did I find that? Let me see something. Okay. Let me see if it was right there. Hold on, fam. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to back it up. Okay, that one. I know what it was. I know what it was. I know exactly what it was. Oh. I'm going to bring it right on up. Hold on. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh, here it go. Yep. I knew I was going to run into it. Now, this is another fresco that they found on uh, the island of uh, Creek, Santorini. Now, the thing is, you see them right there boxing, right? They sitting there boxing. I want to thank you, family, for your support. I just looked up there. Thank you for your support, man. You see the uh this uh fresco in Creek or Santorini, and you see they boxing with that one glove. That's that Danby. I think they call it Danby boxing, and I, I believe. Let me see what it's out of. Let me let me let me let me look at it. I'm gonna put that. Let me see. Damn. There it is. And be martial art. It's the house of people. You see what I'm saying about you know about a Nigeria. You know that's about a Nigeria, but you see that one boxing glove. You see what I'm saying? And so I, you know, this was shit. That I, you know, look, studying my people's culture for so long, I, I, I acknowledge that shit myself. This was shit that I came to bring to the people. I had never seen nobody bring. You see them right there, you know, they had the one glove and shit. You see, this is where they, and so not only that, you know, and along with the bull, let me bring, let me bring you this just to show. The one glove. I know that's a hard hit. I know that was a hard hit. That motherfucker's face looked like it's transforming and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there it is right there. You know what I'm saying? So you can see that it was more than just, you know, you know, they uh, the, the, the family then went up in there. They was the original ones in in that continent before the usurpers. Then you see the usurper doing it, and then you think it started with them. 
You see what I'm saying? That's just like motherfuckers starting the origins, starting the origins of hip hop with Eminem and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, nigga? And so this is the uh, I'm gonna drop it in for y'all. And so you see, right? You know, if you look down there, what a yellow circle is. You know, right there at the bottom, the yellow circle, Santorini. That's where they find uh, they found that uh, those frescoes. You see, and so you 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 see that they you know. The shield is there also. And another thing that, you know, I was, when I saw it, and I saw this, uh, this Nubian fresco, another thing that I recognized immediately. Where, which one? One thing I recognized immediately. Bring this one down. You see them chairs right there. You see what I'm saying? You know, they, they creating all type of jewelry. And so when I was studying, I looked at King Tut's tomb. I say, damn, them the same type of. And so a lot of what went into the, the, the gold craftsmen and you know what I'm saying? All the jewelry. I seen the twa was also jewelers and, and things. And so much of what you see in Egypt actually was created in Nubia. And this is what people fail to understand. You see what I'm saying? You know, I'm gonna get his bro. I'm gonna get his brother a shout out. I appreciate him. You know, for you know, for his love and you know, respect to you, King. You see what I'm saying? Respect to you. You know, and so you know, you know, the chairs. You know, a lot of the jewelry that you see was created in Nubia. Another thing that I saw, and you look up there, you see them, them ostrich fans. You see them ostrich fans. That's another thing. They make damn near everything with the art. They would take the feathers and make the fans with it and so on. And so this was King Tut. Now, this is still an ostrich fan, and it was, it was, ex, it was explained as an ostrich fan, but it's made with gold overlay. You see down here, ceremonial ostrich fan of King Tutankhamun. And so you see there also that the Nubians, you know, were creating a lot, many of the things that were sacred. You see here the, the Sempris, you know, and you see the leopard skin, and you see the Nubians bringing the lepers up. So every, you know, almost everything that was sacred to the the, to the Egyptians was also sacred to the rest of the Africans. You know, it wasn't just sacred to Egypt. It was sacred to the Nubians. It was sacred to the Ethiopians. It was sacred to the Southern Africans. It was sacred to the Western Africans. You see, this was a continental so spirituality. And even though it manifested in, in many different forms, it was a uniquely interchangeable spirituality to where you could easily go from anywhere in the continent and continue to practice your form of spirituality because it was not too much different than any of the other forms of spirituality on the continent. And so again, you see here, you know, uh, and you see here the bull's tail, which, you know, were brought up, which is a part of the priesthood, you know, the crab, which they call the crab. And you see Nama right there with the bull tail. And so again, the majority of what you see as far as spirituality, the zoo type, the sacred zoo type, the origin of the zoo type, the habitat, all of that is sacred to Southern Africa. You know, to the south of Egypt, and so you know, even you know, I I did the lion. I, I had the lion in there too, which of course he he from the south. At one point in time, uh, the lion even was far north. He was far north, but you know, you know, the the further north you get, you get them got you know, you get them savage invaders and shit. 
and they don't they don't know how to do nothing but kill. You know what I'm saying? And so I had a, a map a map on here. And you see right there the spink or horn market. And so you see the lion's habitat. The lion's habitat at this point is in the south. But you in which they was all over. But you see where they, you know, current, the current range is really the source of the lion. Even though they, you know, they, you know, they roam away from, you know, you, you can't beat Africa as far as uh, food and so on and so forth. That's why the lions in, in Africa was, is way bigger than any other goddamn lion on, on the planet. Now, there's one lion which they don't talk about called the Barbary lion. And I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a video on that lion. He was a northern, he was the northern lion, you know, a north North African lion. And he was supposedly even bigger than the one in the south. You see what I'm saying? And shit, they say he was about the size of a tiger. You see, and so, you know, I'm going to do some more researching, but again, you're talking about the lion's home habitat is in the south. That's where it's at. So without any doubt, just continue to do your research. If you see a zoo type, look up the habitat. Watch, you know, watch, you know, watch the animals and shit. That's what you need. But we are, you know, even the animals is calling on African people to reclaim the divine responsibility that was given unto them by the cosmos being the, the caretaker and the custodian of the planet. Too many of the precious gems and jewels of the planet are leaving here through extinction and extermination because the enemy has no natural instinct to abide by natural law. They are a erratic, uh, 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 you know, an erratic thing that has come to, to be in the universe. And we don't understand how it could happen. But it has, you know, it has no inheritance in, in following natural law. And so because it has no inheritance in following natural law, it does everything it can. You understand what I'm saying? To to destroy, you understand, to to you know, to plunder, you to pillage. And so we got to do something about that. And we need to do it right now. This is the general. I want to thank you for being here today. We're about to move on to the next episode. The next, the next uh the next lecture up up on the slate. Going over to General Seti's uh, page, we're going to, we got to go over there now. Let me drop it down there. We got to drop it down there from that time so y'all can see it. Y'all might want to come over. Where's the true home of the woolly head black race? You see, <laughs> I'm about to have some fun with this shit. Believe me. Thank y'all for being in the house. KingSetty.com, GeneralSetty.com, Patreon, uh, General Sarasun Seti. Show me some love. Get on over there and become, you know, a patron. Subscribe and, and, and get that work. I, I, I put in many, many years, man, of, of good work for you. I know you're going to enjoy it, and I know you're going to prosper from it. This is the General Sarasun Seti saying, hey, arm yourself with uh, knowledge. Bang on that wicked ass beast daily. Liberation through African education and confrontation. Black power.